Howdy my totally is always tubular gamers and we're back with you guessed it another ranking video and today we're talking some Sonic. It's been a while since we talked about Sonic on the channel but finally it's time again to talk about the blue blur. Today we're talking 2D Sonic. That is right. We are ranking every single 2D Sonic game. I thought with the recent release of Sonic Superstars it was finally time. Now Sonic the Hedgehog really doesn't need an introduction here, one of the most famous video game series characters ever. He's got two full-blown movies, a third on the way. He's been in dozens upon dozens of video games, 2D, 3D, racing games, weird party game, even some pinball games. But today we're talking about where Sonic got started in the 2D setting as a 2D platformer. You know, the original couple Sonics were 2D platformers. Many people believe that Sonic was only good in 2D and has only ever been good in 2D. I wholeheartedly disagree, but you know, people think a lot of things about the Sonic the Hedgehog series, and today I'm sharing my opinion. We're gonna be ranking all of the 2D games from worst to best, giving each one a little review, stacking them up against each other, seeing how they all line up against each other, which one's the worst, which one's really the worst, which ones are good, which ones are actually worth playing. Sonic has been through a bunch of different eras with his 2D games, so it's really interesting to line them all up against each other and cover so many games. Now, sit back, get some popcorn, put this video on 1.5 speed or whatever it is that you do, maybe a long car ride because we're gonna be here for a while. There's a lot of 2D Sonic games to discuss. So yeah, let's get it started. Before we begin though, I wanna put two ground rules out. First, we're looking at 2D platformers, so something like Sonic Labyrinth, which I guess is 2D. We're not gonna include that and we're not gonna include Sonic Spinball if you love that game. I'm sorry. The other ground rule is that we're looking at just one version of each game. Some of these games have numerous re-releases of varying quality we're looking at just one version of each game the quote best version of each game and as usual this is just my opinion you know there might be some hot takes there might be some cold takes you might really agree with what i have to say or you might completely disagree either way let me know down below i always love to read comments please like share comment subscribe if you haven't already i'm doing tons of big ranking videos so you're going to want to check those out we got a super thanks and patreon going on as well any support is greatly and i truly do mean greatly appreciated but that's a long enough intro, I know you all want to know, what is at the very bottom of the barrel? You know, Sonic's got a lot of bad games, but what's at the bottom when it comes to the 2D side of games? What's the worst 2D Sonic game? And here we have Sonic Blast releasing for the Sega Game Gear in 96. This is not to be confused with Sonic 3D Blast, that truly excellent Sega Saturn and Genesis game. No, this is a 2D platformer that uses very similar sprites to Sonic 3D Blast but somehow plays even worse than 3D Blast. Considerably worse, actually. It makes 3D Blast look actually kind of good in comparison. Sonic Blast is one of the worst Sonic games of them all. I mean, it's one of those rare instances where I could say a game truly has basically nothing good going for it. There is like nothing good about this game. Let's talk about the first thing you see when you look at this game, the presentation. This game, well, just look at it. It looks like fucking shit. It just straight looks like dog dookie. I have nothing good to say about the presentation. The sprites look just horrible. The animation is atrocious. They take up way too much real estate on the screen. They're just too big. The frame rate is awful in this game and the environments just look terrible. And on the gameplay side, really nothing is any better either. You know, you can be Sonic or Knuckles and Knuckles can, you know, glide. Sonic can go into the spin dash and try to run fast, but you ain't going fast in this game. This is one of the slowest Sonic games ever made. On top of the frame rate just being really choppy, the game just is slow. It feels like Sonic's underwater the entire game. And then there's actually underwater levels to make matters worse. You never get a good sense of speed, nothing even close. And then these levels are some of the most basic 2D levels you'll find in any Sonic game. Even for the Game Gear, these suck. Bland, boring, basic, the triple B, it's just not good when it comes to the level design here. The physics are just all over the place. It's just terrible. Sonic controls terribly. He's not fun to move around. It's not fun to go fast. You'll just end up hitting something. The game does have special stages and bosses to it, but these are as bad as you would expect. The game basically has no redeeming qualities at all. The best part of this game is when the game gears turned off. I remember trying this game back on Sonic Mega Collection Plus on PS2 as a kid and just immediately being like, what is this? This is horrible. And so my sentiment's still the same. This is horrible. Do not play. And here we have Sonic the Hedgehog for the Game Gear and Master System releasing back in 91. Most people don't even realize that this is a different game from the original Genesis game. It might share a lot of the same themes and level ideas, but yeah, totally different level design and oh boy it shows. 
Now, before I roast this game, I will give this game a few props. For a Game Gear game, I think it is decently impressive, you know? The presentation is alright, the music's okay, the frame rate's solid, and the first couple levels you do get to go actually kind of fast and the game's able to keep up with you. Unfortunately, after Green Hill Zone, basically none of this game is fast ever again. Now, unfortunately, this just isn't a very good 2D platformer, let alone a good Sonic game. You know, that first level, like I said, you get to go kind of fast, level design isn't half bad, and you're like, oh, maybe this could be decent, but after that, the game just totally falls off, and it just comes to a screeching halt. You know, like how most people complain that in the original Sonic the Hedgehog, once you get to Marble Zone, the game comes to a screeching halt, and it becomes a very basic, slow platformer? Imagine that, but like an entire game. This game, when it comes to its platforming, sense of speed, physics, controls, it it's just not very good outside of that first level. It's a surprisingly slow 2D platformer with some incredibly basic level design, uninteresting gameplay, poor physics and controls, and you just don't have a very good game here. Some of these levels, you know, they could be almost decent, and other ones are just terrible, like the auto-scroller, the jungle shit, I hated these levels. Most of the levels in this game were incredibly basic, forgettable, and again, just uninteresting. It was just kind of boring. You know, maybe for the time this was okay, but nowadays, no, this is not worth playing. Like Sonic Blast, I tried this one as a kid on Mega Collection Plus and also did not like it very much, and I just can't recommend it nowadays. If you have some fun memories with it, well, sorry, not sorry. You can make new memories with new Sonic games. And here we have Tails Sky Patrol releasing for the Game Gear in 95. The game might not have Sonic in the name, but yeah, it's a Sonic game. The original game actually never came to America. It wasn't until the Sonic collections that people finally got to play it in the States. That's how I played it. I played it on Sonic Adventure DX. I was like, whoa, there's a Tails game? No way. And I tried it, and I finished it within 30 minutes. Now, this is a very strange game. You play as Tails exclusively, and you can just fly freely, basically. You can fly up and down and all around and shoot your ring out at enemies or to interact with the areas. You'll solve some very basic puzzles and you'll just go through a couple levels and then the game's done like that. The game doesn't do anything particularly all that interesting, but it certainly stands out from other Sonic games. I mean, if this game looks really fun to, you know, shooting your ring at enemies and hooking on to stuff and the occasional puzzle, maybe you'll have some fun with this game, but you won't have much fun because, like I've alluded to, the game is stupid short. I finished this game in under half an hour. Like, this is one of the shortest video games that I've ever played. In the time it's taken you to watch the video up until this point, you could have basically played through the entire game already. It's that short, and it's not remarkable, it's not really fun, it is different, and it does have a decent presentation with some okay music, but all of this combined really doesn't make this game worth playing. It unfortunately is not a very good game that probably just shouldn't be tried by anybody at this point. It does have a very interesting development history though, I will give it that, but nowadays, yeah, don't even bother. And here we have Sonic Chaos releasing for the Game Gear in 93. Now, interestingly enough, Sonic Chaos was the first original Sonic game for a handheld rather than being based off like a Genesis game like Sonic 1, 2, or Spinball. But does that mean it's any good? Well, I don't know about that one. I don't really have a bunch to say with this game. The game, unfortunately, does not have chaos from Sonic Adventure in it at all. It's about Sonic and Tails just being Sonic and Tails, I guess, and, you know, getting Chaos Emeralds and running through some levels. And what you have here is quite an unremarkable 2D platformer, especially in the Sonic series. You could play as Sonic, you could play as Tails, they do have separate abilities from each other, you know, Tails can fly, Sonic can turn into a ball and go really fast, but you're not going to be going all that fast in this game, as unfortunately the frame rate is just not very good in this game, and even when the frame rate's fine, this game doesn't have a great sense of speed to it, it doesn't have very good controls or physics either, being just kind of wonky. And I just never got used to how this game felt in its short runtime. When it comes to the levels, they're really, yeah, just unremarkable. There's nothing here to really speak about. Like, these are 2D levels. Are you going to remember them even an hour after you played them? No. And speaking of an hour, this game, it's not even that long. The breaks I take at work are longer than this game, and by the time you're done with it, you will forget that it even existed. Sure, it does have original level themes compared to other Sonic games, and you know you can't play as Sonic or Tails, there's these weird rocket boots as a power-up, but this game is just so forgettable. Like, I'd argue all the Game Gear games are forgettable, but Sonic Chaos, yeah, it feels particularly forgettable. I just can't really recommend this game. Even if you own a collection that has it on it, just try like almost any other Sonic game. 
But somebody must have really liked it, because here we have the follow-up Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble releasing for the Game Gear in 94. Now, Triple Trouble actually does have a bit of a story to it. It's about Sonic and Tails trying to protect the Chaos Emeralds from Eggman, Knuckles, and newcomer Fang the Sniper. And you know, it's cool to see Fang here. He's in Sonic Superstar, so clearly something must have worked out for that fella. But when it comes to the gameplay, it's incredibly similar to Sonic Chaos. It's unfortunately just as bland, basic, forgettable, generic, unremarkable, and all those other fun words I use to describe Sonic Chaos. Like, there just isn't a lot going on with this game. There's a couple different zones, and it plays like a very standard, run-of-the-mill 2D platformer. It doesn't have a great sense of speed. The physics and controls are really what you would expect presentation-wise. It's basically the same as Sonic Chaos. The music ain't half bad. And the game just kind of fails to really do anything all that different from the other Game Gear games. Like, if you really do love Sonic games on Game Gear, then I guess, yeah, go check it out. But for everybody else, you can totally avoid this game. It just doesn't do anything special. I mean, it does have different special stages. You're in a plane, but that's besides the point. The game is just not worth playing. I, I'm having trouble talking about this game because it's just so run-of-the-mill and just generic. Like, let's just move on. And here we have Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal releasing for the 3DS in 2014. This game was the handheld sibling to the just truly delightful Wii U game Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. Now, even though I would say this game is better than the Wii U game, that really isn't saying anything at all, and it still isn't a very good game. The game is a tie-in to the Sonic Boom TV show that I just haven't really watched all that much of, and it's kind of a prequel to the show, and it's about this evil cyborg Lyric the Last Ancient attempting to conquer the world. And so Sonic and friends have to go stop Lyric. The plot... I really don't got much to say here. It exists, it's there, and you know, it's not the worst thing on the planet. It's not Sonic 06 bad, but I wouldn't say this is very good. Now, when it comes to the gameplay, it's somewhat different from other 2D Sonic games. You know, it's not the traditional A to B, left to right 2D platformer that Sonic's known for. This game is a bit more about the exploration. You're gonna be going left to right, up and down, right to left, and all over the place. You can play as four different characters here, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Newcomer Styx, and you can switch between them instantly in gameplay. Each character does have their own unique abilities, and exploring around you're gonna need to use these abilities. It's kind of like a Metroidvania in that sense, only it's not done anywhere near as well as, you know, a Metroid or Castlevania game. The exploration in this game, it really is the focal point here. I mean, you do get a decent sense of speed sometimes, but you'll come to a grinding halt because you'll have to explore areas. You're looking for these crystal shards or blueprints, and you actually need quite a lot of these to beat the game, way more than you honestly should need. Like, you'll have to do a fair amount of exploring here, and the game's pacing will just come to a grinding halt because you'll just be exploring around these areas, using your abilities to try to get these. And you know, this probably isn't a hot take, but I really don't like it when you have to do a ton of exploring in Sonic levels, especially in a 2D setting. Like, I just wanna go fast. I don't wanna be stopped to a grinding halt to explore every inch of a map, to find some collectible. If I wanted to play a game like that, I'd probably go play Castlevania. I'd boot up Symphony of the Night or something. I don't want to do that in a Sonic game. The level design was not particularly astounding either. I mean, it was okay, I guess. The controls and physics in this game weren't terrible either. They were like, just all right, but I think this game would have honestly done better if it was just more of a traditional Sonic game with different characters rather than all this exploring shit. I didn't really care much for this game, but I have heard a few people say they actually enjoyed it, and you know, more power to you, I guess. Maybe I'm just close-minded to my 2D Sonic games, but yeah, this one gets a thumbs down from me. And here we have the very forgotten Knuckles Chaotic releasing for the Sega 32X in 95. This is the first and likely only 32X game you'll ever find me talking about. I don't own a 32X, I've always played this game on an emulator, and Knuckles Chaotic, you know, it has some really interesting ideas and some good things to it, but nowadays, eh, this game is pretty middling in my opinion. To start with a positive, you know, it is all about Knuckles, one of my favorite Sonic characters. It's great he got his own game, it introduced Chaotix, which are some really fun characters characters in the Sonic world that would get a much more prominent role in, say, Sonic Heroes, but they all got started here. I like them all, and I like the personalities they have. Speaking of personality, I really like this game's tone, its aesthetic, how it looks. It's kind of a visual treat, especially if you love that old sprite work from Sonic games. Like, I love how this game looks. It has a great look to it, and I don't think it looks bad at all. The same could really be said about the music, it's just banger after banger, the music is really good in Knuckles Chaotix, and you know, that's really the best aspects of Knuckles Chaotic. The big thing with Knuckles Chaotic is its gimmick. 
the ring gimmick. Now the game is a linear 2D platformer, same as all the other Sonic games where you'll go through loops, do some platforming, and get a decent sense of speed. But now you have a buddy accompanying you. At the beginning of every level, you will have a buddy join you, you'll be attached at the hip, you'll really be tethered to each other, and it's like a rubber band. And there's plenty of different characters here, all of Chaotix and Knuckles, and they all have special abilities, and depending on your team, you'll also have special abilities. And then you'll go through some levels. The levels aren't all that different from Sonic games, you know, there's enemies, you can spin dash, there's rings to pick up, there's boss fights, it doesn't sound all that different until you realize that the level design really centers around the whole tether gimmick, and then you realize you don't really like the tether gimmick. Maybe it's just me, but I've never liked the tether gimmick, whether I played this game as a kid or nowadays, I just don't care for the tether gimmick here. It feels so weird. It just doesn't flow well. It messes with my pacing. I'm trying to go really fast and it feels like it just stops me over and over and the level design isn't the most conducive for it sometimes. Sometimes it feels like the design has been compromised for this tether gimmick and other times it feels like it's not accommodating at all. And some of these zones just go on way too long with three long ass acts in each one. Like it felt at times like this game was never going to end. Like for everything this game gets right, it feels like it gets something wrong. You know, decent sense of speed, but you're held back by the tether gimmick. Unique ideas with the character abilities, but it's held back by the tether gimmick. Like I know they were trying to go for something a little different with this ring tether mechanic gimmick, I guess you'd call it. But the game probably would be a lot better if you just played as one character and you could switch who you wanted to play as like any other Sonic game, you know? If they made it more traditional, it probably would have been better. It does have unique special stages. Okay, it's not all that unique, it's kind of a spin-off of Blue Sphere, but I actually like the special stages in this game, and you know, I really do want to like this game. Like, I love Knuckles, I love the idea of it, I love the basic plot, I love the characters, the music, the presentation. Sometimes I like this game, and other times I'm just annoyed as hell by the tether gimmick. Like, I don't want to be held back by the other player. It messes with the core mechanics of Sonic too much, like the physics, like the controls, like the feel, the sense of speed. It just messes with it to the point that I just don't think it's all that fun. Despite that though, I think this game would really benefit from a re-release, let more people play it since it is so forgotten, and maybe let you actually choose which character you want instead of the claw machine, and I don't know, maybe just kinda get rid of the tether gimmick, I mean, I don't know if you could beat the game without that, but find some way to improve it, or maybe improve the physics like they did with, say, Sonic CD. I think the game still deserves a re-release, do I recommend it? Not currently, but you know, it's not the worst game. And here we have Tails Adventure releasing for the Game Gear in 95. Now Tails Adventure, I mean it's pretty obvious where it is on the list, but it's certainly better than Sky Patrol and is probably what people wanted from say a Tails game. You know, Sonic's not here at all, it really is just Tails, and what we have is a more slower paced adventure game rather than the quick linear 2D platformer that Sonic's known for. The game really is all about Tails here, it is a solo adventure, so you know, no Sonic, no mercy here. It's about Tails exploring this island and defeating the enemies inhabiting it, complete with a giant explosion at the end. No, seriously, he actually just flattens these guys, and the story is what it is. It's very basic, and it's just kind of there. Now, when it comes to the gameplay, it's really surprising how similar Shattered Crystal is to Tails Adventure, and that's probably not the comparison you'd expect to hear today. It really is basically a Metroidvania where you'll get new power-ups and you'll be exploring around, and this, you know, I didn't really care for it in Shattered Crystal. I don't really care for it all that much here but I mean it's a little better the game is on a much smaller scale it ends a lot faster and I don't know I kind of enjoyed this a little bit more you know I don't have this expectation that I'm going to be going super fast in a Tails game and so I'm I'm willing to accept it here and the game has some decent level design the game has a nice sense of exploration and the game actually does reward you with a bunch of different items in this game you can actually get some upgrades here you can get some cool weapons like bombs to blow stuff up and yeah it's okay I wouldn't say it's the most exciting and if you're expecting you know a great sense of exploration or superb level design or anything that you haven't really seen before from any type of basic metroidvania you're not gonna see it here but again it's okay this game it ain't half bad it's pretty harmless and I can confidently say you could do a hell of a lot worse in the Tails series, and by series I mean this or Sky Patrol. I'd much rather play this game than Sky Patrol, at least this game I've actually had a little bit of fun with. It's longer than 15-20 minutes, also taking, you know, 2 or 3 hours. It's surprisingly one of the better Sonic Game Gear games. I know that's not saying anything at all, but this game, it's not as bad as you would think. But would I ever recommend this game nowadays? <laughs> Uh, probably not. You know, if you've got a Sonic collection and it's on said Sonic collection, you've tried like all the other games, or you're curious what a Tails game would look like, 
yeah, then I think it's worth trying, but otherwise, yeah, you could probably just skip it. And here we have Sonic the Hedgehog 2 releasing for the Master System in the Game Gear in 1992. Now I'm gonna just put it out there, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on Game Gear, it ain't half bad, you know, it's actually quite a bit better than Sonic 1 on Game Gear, and it doesn't really try to be like Sonic 2 on Genesis. This very much is its own game, complete with unique levels, gimmicks, ideas, etc. Now does it come even close to any of the Sonic games on Genesis? Oh hell no it doesn't, but what you have in my opinion is the best of the Sonic games on Game Gear, cause you know, that's really saying a lot. Presentation wise, yeah, this game is alright, it looks okay, it's got a decent frame rate, and it's got some nice tunes to it. Controls and physics wise, you know, it's not amazing, but I'd say it's it's passable, it's certainly passable for the Game Gear, you gotta cut it a little slack, it's, it's better than really any of the other Sonic Game Gear games. What really makes this game even half decent is the level design. They actually try to have some original ideas here, not just with the themes and the gimmicks, but like how the levels play through, like you actually get to go on a hang glider, and this, you know, you could actually have some fun here the level design it ain't that bad it's okay is it remarkable is it all that memorable no but it's not just incredibly forgettable and generic either like you can actually kind of recall a few things i could recall the hang glider the game has a decent pace to it you aren't going stupid slow the entire game like the first one on game gear it does have some speed to it and the game can actually keep up with it I wasn't just borderline bored out of my mind going, wow, this is really bland like I did with some of the other Game Gear games. Yeah, the boss fights are nothing special. Some of these levels are hit and miss, but it certainly wasn't the worst thing. It wasn't the worst levels that you've seen Sonic in on a Game Gear. Not even close. And really, it's just kind of surprising how different this game is from Sonic 2 on Genesis. Like, there really is no connection here. And there's a reason this game was actually included on other collections versus some of the other Game Gear games, because it is different. And oh wow, it's actually decent. Should you play it nowadays? If you really love Sonic and haven't tried it, Maybe it's worth trying. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah, you could probably just skip it. There's a lot of other better Sonic games, but this game, it's not awful. It's not a waste of time. It's its something that I could talk about for more than about 45 seconds. So, you know, that's a thumbs up for me. And here we have Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 1 releasing in 2010. Now, I'll be upfront. This game, it ain't so great, but man, do I have a ton of nostalgia for it. I remember the moment it was announced, I was really excited. I was like, wow, they're making a fourth one. I love the first three games. I remember talking about it on the playground, and then when it came out, I got it on WiiWare and played through it like three or four times. I played it with one of my friends. We just, we both love this game. However, I can see now coming back to it that, yeah, the game isn't so great and it has a bunch of issues, especially when compared to the first three games. I think I was just more happy that there was a new 2D Sonic game on a home console. Luckily, we are in much better times now. So Sonic 4 Episode 1, you know, it takes place after Sonic and Knuckles and sees Eggman returning. But this time, we don't have classic Sonic here. This is modern Sonic in a 2D setting. So, you know, the spin dash is here, the homing attack is here and the physics slash controls and hit detection were kind of whack, but before we tear this game a new asshole, let me say there are a few things I do like about it, you know, the music, I still kind of think it's half decent, it's not great, but it's, it's okay, and the presentation, I think for an Xbox Live title, WiiWare title, PSN title, it looks fine, Sonic is really shiny for some reason, and you know, the background and environments are not gonna wow you, but I think for such a budget title, yeah, it was alright. And then we get to the things that I don't really like. You know, as a kid, I was able to ignore just about all of this, but nowadays, it's pretty much impossible to. There was only four zones in this game, meaning the game is maybe an hour, hour ten long, which is just way too short. Even for a Sonic game, that's like criminally short. And these levels are really nothing special. They all reuse old themes and gimmicks from other Sonic games, and they were done better in those Sonic games than here. Here, they just feel kind of, I don't know, watered down. They just feel not as fresh, not as fun, a bit generic in the actual design of these levels. <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing really going on here. If you've played any 2D Sonic game, you're going to feel right at home here, and you might even go, this kind of feels like deja vu, because it just feels like there's no original ideas here, or imaginative ideas here. And then when it comes to how Sonic controls, and the physics, and the hit detection, and the homing attack, it, it's just not very good. It's really wonky. The collision detection isn't great. The homing attack is just wildly unresponsive, which is strange in a 2D setting. And it just doesn't flow all that well. Sonic's speed is all over the place. It doesn't feel nice. It doesn't have a great sense of speed. Like, when you play those original three Sonic games, you don't even really think about the physics or the controls because it just works. It just works and it's great and it's a fun time. Here, it doesn't. 
you can't roll down a hill. Sonic stops on a dime, which is just really weird. And the bottom line is he's just not fun to control. And if he's not fun to control, then why would you have any fun going through these levels? Now, Sonic 4 Episode 1, it's got a few good moments to it. It's not broken as shit. It's not a horrible game, but it's certainly not the ideal Sonic game. And I just can't really recommend this game to anybody, even with all my nostalgia. And fun memories with this game, playing through it numerous times, getting all the Chaos Emeralds, which, by the way, the special stages suck. I just can't recommend anybody ever try this. Like, why did they go with the episodic format? It is not really a great fit for Sonic. And speaking of episodic format, here we have Sonic 4 Episode 2 releasing in 2012. Again, developed by Dimps and Sonic Team, it was the follow-up to Episode 1, and it continues the story, Tails joins him, and it's about Sonic going up against Eggman and Metal Sonic. Now, while I would say that Episode 2 is better than Episode 1, it still isn't all that great. First off, you know, we don't really have many levels. Again, the game isn't particularly long. It's pretty short, even for a Sonic game. At least these levels, though, are better. Yeah, they're still kind of ripped from other Sonic games, but there's at least a few original ideas here, and the level design is a little better. And one reason it is better is because the game actually does have a cooperative aspect. See, Sonic is with Tails the entire time. You can play through the whole game in two-player, which I did, and I had a decent time, but but yeah, the game actually kind of takes advantage of there being two characters, you know, Sonic and Tails, they can actually team up to do a few power-ups, like they can start 69ing and go flying into one direction, or Tails can lift Sonic up to help him get to a certain place, and the levels kind of take advantage of this, I mean, it feels like they were at least made with this in mind. Yeah, I'd say the level design is just a little bit better, and the physics, you know, same thing, they're just a little bit better. It's still kind of wonky, it still feels weird, and there's plenty of awkward moments, but it's not as bad as the first game. Graphically, it's like on par with the first game, looks a little better, not as shiny, but it's still a relatively budget Xbox Live Arcade title, so I'll give that a pass. The music, I can't really recall any of it, especially off the top of my head, so it probably wasn't very good. The music is just kind of whatever in this game. In fact, whatever I think is the perfect word to describe not only Sonic 4 Episode 2, but just Sonic 4 in general. Like, it wasn't horrible, but I couldn't recommend this to even the most, like, die-hard Sonic fans. We never got Episode 3, which clearly we were supposed to get in Episode 3, and you know, if all three of these came together, we might have a half-decent game here. They did have Episode Metal for Episode 2, where you can play as Metal Sonic, but this, this really doesn't do anything. Oh, worth mentioning, the game does have the return of everyone's favorite special stage, the Half Pipe, but... Yeah, Sonic 4 Episode 2, like, do yourself a favor and just skip it, honestly. Just skip it. And here we have Sonic Boom Fire and Ice, developed by Sanzaru and released for the 3DS in 2016. I'm kinda shocked we got a third Sonic Boom game, I mean, the first two were just so well received, but, you know, maybe the TV show is actually pretty decent and that's why we got this game. But anyway, Fire and Ice centers around this element known as Regnium, and it's about Eggman trying to harness it and, you know, take over the world, yada yada yada, Sonic and friends stop him. The story, it's nothing special in this game, it's it's fine for what it is. When it comes to the gameplay, it's not all that different from the other 3DS Sonic Boom game. However, a few things have been changed, you know? You still choose between a couple different characters that you unlock along the way, you can switch on the fly, they all have their own abilities, but the new gimmick here is the fire and ice gimmick. However, it's really basic. When you see something cold, you activate the fire ability and just go through it. When you see something hot, you activate the cold ability and go through it. It's really as simple as that, and it doesn't really ever get any more complex. There's not any super complex puzzles with this, and the levels are a lot more straightforward than the previous game. They're not as complex or open-ended as the previous boom, and that's probably to the game's benefit. Like, I didn't love exploring around like a Metroidvania in a Sonic game, and this game has a lot less of that. You can still do it a little bit, and there are collectibles here, but the sense of exploration, just exploration in general, it's not really the main focus here. You don't need to collect a bunch of shit to beat the game either. You can just go through this game like a normal Sonic game and that's it. So how is it as a normal Sonic game though? It's okay. I'm not going to say it's particularly great. The controls and physics and flow is it's okay at best and the level design, you know, while it is more straightforward and I can appreciate that, it's also kind of generic. It's just kind of there. Like, I just didn't really feel anything while playing through this game. It felt very by the numbers, especially for a Sonic game, and it felt like I was in autopilot mode for most of the game, just kind of going through the motions. 
at least you actually do get to go fast in this game. It has a half decent sense of speed, but by the time I was like finishing up with it, I was like, gosh, I just can't really tell you anything about that game. Like what a forgettable experience. And while I wouldn't say this game is a bad game, I wouldn't say it's a good game either. It just kind of falls somewhere in the middle. Maybe if you really love Sonic Boom and love the characters and the story and this gameplay does hook you, maybe you could like it a bit more than I did, but I don't know. I just didn't really care for it and I couldn't care what happens to this series like if this is the series best game then yikes I think we should move away from the Sonic Boom name it's probably tainted especially for video games at this point so anyway and here we have Sonic Generations, but this time for the 3DS, developed by Dimps and released in 2011. This game is different from the home console version of Sonic Generations, with totally different level design, and it's completely in 2D. The story, though, is exactly the same, with there being the Sonic birthday celebration, the two Sonics, modern and classic, taking on the two Eggmans, or I guess in this case, Robotnik and Eggman. Now, when it comes to the gameplay, the way this game is split up is interesting. There's modern Sonic and classic Sonic. Modern Sonic plays more like Sonic Colors on DS, Sonic Rush, and Classic Sonic plays like Classic Sonic. Classic Sonic's gameplay is basically the home console version of Sonic Generations, just with some different level design. Now, when it comes to modern Sonic, though, yeah, it's very much modern Sonic. You know, you're boosting all over, there's a homing attack, and he's a lot lankier. Now, when it comes to the levels, it's also different from the home console version. They didn't just copy and paste everything over from that game. There's less levels than the home console version, but there are some differences here. For instance, Mushroom Hill Zone is actually here. And the levels that are the same as the home console version don't have the same level design. It is different, and it's also not as good, which is probably my biggest issue with Sonic Generations on the 3DS is that the level design, it's just okay. Like the modern Sonic stuff, it feels fine. It does feel a little by the numbers and the classic Sonic stages, they just kind of feel like remixes of older Sonic games, which I mean, that's kind of the point of Generations, but I just didn't love the level design here. When it comes to the controls and the physics and the flow of this game, I think it's decent. It's not, you know, spectacular, but I think it's pretty decent for the most part. And modern Sonic, yeah, you actually do get some really good speed here, which is impressive for the 3DS. At least I can say the music absolutely slaps. The music is great in this game since it is a bunch of the old themes, some remix themes. Yeah, music's great. The presentation was very good for the 3DS and the frame rate was decent. Look, Sonic Generations on 3DS, it doesn't hold a candle to say the 360 version, but nobody expected it to. People thought this was just some shitty watered down port and it's better than that. It's a decent Sonic game. You know, it is a bit short even compared to the home console version, but it's fine for what it is. It's relatively harmless. And if you really love Sonic, you love Generations, this might be worth checking out. And so here we have Sonic Rush Adventure releasing for the DS in 2007. They really tried to build on the original Sonic Rush. The game begins with Sonic and Tails on the tornado and get sucked into, funny enough, a tornado and end up on this island and meet up with this new character, Marine who wants to be a sailor and is pretty annoying, and then they meet up with Blaze. It turns out they're in Blaze's dimension, actually, and they have to take out the evil Captain Whisker, who is very clearly Eggman, and the story is about as basic as you would expect. There's a lot of text here, surprisingly, and they try to give Marine kind of a character, but it just didn't really work out, and you know, this plot is just very forgettable. So when it comes to playing Sonic Rush Adventure, it is obviously very similar to the first Sonic Rush. It's a 2D platform where you can play as either Sonic or Blaze the Cat, and it sees you boosting a lot, doing a lot of tricks, and generally going pretty fast, with some occasional platforming and occasionally fighting some enemies and a boss. Like the first game, you do go incredibly fast. You boost a ton in this game. Most of the game, you're holding down the boost button, and in order to get boost, you do the tricks in the air where Sonic just starts popping off, and Blaze will just go nuts as well, but you'll accrue boost, and then you just continuously boost through these areas. And like the first Sonic Rush, it isn't the most difficult or interesting level design. It doesn't go absolutely nuts like some of the older Sonic games with a ton of routes, but again, you'll go through them really fast, and you know, it's pretty fun to just go through these levels, blasting through them, and yeah, there is some platforming that is a bit sticky here and there, and sometimes you'll be fighting enemies and it gets a little annoying. But for the most part, I would say that the 2D sections are actually really quite fun. The bosses are even pretty decent here. So why is this game not higher than even the first Sonic Rush? Unfortunately, they added in all this extra crap in between the levels where you have to do all this ship stuff. Like you have to craft the ship and the parts or you have to do these like vehicle sections where you're going from level to level on the map. And all of this side stuff, I just hated this as a kid. I just wanted to play the 2D levels and they, they have all this extra crap. 
I don't like upgrading the ship, I don't like these missions, and I don't like all the little gimmicky stuff that they add here and there from them. I mean, it's just not fun, it's not engaging, it really pads the game out, and the game isn't even very long anyway, and it's just like, okay, well, well the game's not very long, this pads it out, this is a fair amount of the game, and it sucks. And it's a shame too, because the levels are, again, pretty decent, I'd say they're like just as good as Sonic Rush's, the music's pretty good, the game looks pretty decent for a DS game, and it should be just as good as the first Sonic Rush, but thanks to all these stupid annoying minigames, it just is a little bit lower for me. Do I recommend it still? I mean, if you love the first Sonic Rush, then go ahead, try it, but I mean, I can say you're really not missing much if you skipped this one. And here we have Sonic the Hedgehog Pocket Adventure, developed by SNK and released for the Neo Geo Pocket Color in 99. This game is way better than it has any right to be. Like, the Neo Geo Pocket Color, you wouldn't expect a great game on here, a great Sonic game no less, but what you have here is actually a really solid game. In fact, after looking it up, this is one of the highest rated Sonic games in existence. It's like shockingly good. Now, I've never had a Pocket Color, so you know, I've always played it on an emulator, and this game totally holds up. It really is a remix of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. The game uses a number of ideas, gimmicks, themes from Sonic 2, but it does have a few ideas from Sonic 1 and even Sonic 3 thrown in here. But the biggest thing is it's got completely original level design to accommodate the pocket color and what do you know it's actually good yeah it's actually good the level design is good in this game there's multiple routes it's interesting it's fun to go through these levels there's a good sense of speed and then on top of that the controls and the physics are also decent too sonic he could be a little slippery at times but he's actually solid to control in this game it's fun to control sonic it's crazy that this game gets it right over all those game gear games over sonic 4 nope this game it actually gets it right it's solid it's got a nice feel to it the physics are nice it's just a fun game graphically you know it's the pocket color so i set my expectations here but it's no slouch the colors are actually incredibly vibrant the game is kind of pretty and i think the game is a lot of solid animation especially for the time like it's a good looking game for the pocket color it looks better than that samurai showdown game on there in fact, while we're talking about Samurai Showdown, it's really crazy how, like, all these pocket color games that I would have never expected to be good are actually decent. Mega Man's decent on the pocket color, Samurai Showdown and Fatal Fury and Capcom vs. SNK are all decent, and Sonic, he's not an exception here either. Sonic is also pretty good on the Neo Geo pocket color, you know? This game really, and I really do mean really, needs a re-release. I don't know why it hasn't been re-released at this point, but it most definitely deserves it, and I think it is actually worth playing if you like 2D Sonic games. It is a pretty good game. It might not be the most original, but it still is a fun time, and really that's what matters at the end of the day. And here we have Sonic Advance 3, developed by Dimps and released for the Game Boy Advance in 2004. Sonic Advance 3 is the follow-up to Sonic Advance 1 and 2. And it really tries to evolve the advanced formula. I don't have a ton of experience with this one, less than the first two, but Sonic Advance 3 has always been the weakest in the advanced trilogy, in my opinion. Now, when it comes to the story, it's very interesting. The game is actually connected to Sonic Battle, the fighting game on Game Boy Advance, and the story really does connect to it with Gemeral, Gemeral, however you say, the robot, and Eggman trying to, you know, use the robot, get the Chaos Emeralds, take over, yada yada yada, you know how it goes. If you play Sonic Battle, it's a cool nod to it, but you do not need to play Sonic Battle to understand the story here. And I really don't have a problem with the story, I think it's fine for what it is. When it comes to the gameplay, it's not crazy far off from the first two advanced games. You get to choose between five different characters, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, and Cream, and you go through seven zones, each with three acts. You actually do get a buddy to join you for all of these acts as well, so it's not going to be just Sonic, you can have Sonic and Tails shit, you can have Sonic and Cream. And each team has their own unique abilities and special moves that they get, you know, depending on the combination. Some of these are clearly better than others, and sometimes it even affects affects the main character's abilities, which can have some negative consequences, but I think the team-up mechanic is a decent idea here. It feels kind of like Knuckles Chaotix, but better. At least these levels seem a bit better designed around these abilities. I say a bit, let's just get right into the level design. The level design in this game is all over the place. I was not really a fan of it, way too many beginner's traps, and a lot of these levels just feel like they go on and on, and there's three acts per zone, so they really were starting to drag by the end of it, and some of the bosses are just ridiculous in this game. The flow of this game is just all over the place, to the point where I was like, I don't know how much fun I was having with these levels. The controls are not as precise as the first 
first two either. They feel really slippery and just kind of like you're sliding all over and you do some really precise platforming in this game much more than the first two and call it a skill issue but I died a bunch during the precise platforming. It's like I've played a ton of Sonic games but this game you know you really got to do some precise platforming and I just didn't love it. I wanted to go fast. Damn it. Where's the going fast areas? There's just spikes all over the place and it feels like there's a bunch of beginner's traps. It gets a little ridiculous. Overall I'd say the level design you know it's not awful but it's just okay at best. At worst, it's a nuisance. And the controls, physics, and general momentum really aren't helping this game out. But, you know, there are some positives here. The game looks pretty solid, the best looking of the Advanced Trilogy. Music is pretty good. I like the character combinations, some of them anyway. You can get some really good abilities that can actually help you. And there are some decent to good levels in this game. They're not all crap. That first couple though, oh, I do not like the first couple levels in this game. And something I don't like is how to get to the special stages in this game for the Chaos Emeralds. It's just terrible. So across the three acts per zone, there are 10 Chow hidden in these levels. And you have to find all 10 per zone to then get the special stage. You can access it from the hub world as many times as you want. Yes, there's hub worlds here, but you have to find the 10 Chow per zone. It, it's ridiculous. You have to do a ton of exploration in, in my opinion, not very good levels for the most part. It No, I didn't do this. I did like one and was like, nope, not going to do this. This is such a hassle. Exploring these areas over and over, looking for the Chow just to figure out where you missed one. No. This is not fun. This is not good. Sonic Advance 3, you know, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. I'd still recommend it if you like the first two Advance games or you love 2D Sonic, but it's not as recommendable as, say, other 2D Sonic games, but it is still a decent to good game. And here we have the latest 2D Sonic game, Sonic Superstars, releasing in 2023. Now, pre-release, I really had no expectation for this game. I was like, it's either going to be alright or it's probably not going to be very good. But I'm here to tell you that, yeah, the game is actually alright. Look, it doesn't reinvent the wheel and it's not one of the best 2D platformers you'll play in 2023, but it still is a pretty good game. Story-wise, the game is pretty simple. It sees Eggman, Robotnik, whatever you want to call him today trying to take over the world destroy sonic and friends etc but he enlists the help of fang the sniper for the first time in quite a long time it is very welcoming to see fang here it has really been a long ass time since fang has been in a game and i was happy to see him the story it's fine for what it is they do introduce another new character that i won't spoil that's really weird and just kind of out of nowhere hopefully they add more context to this character but the story's fine for what it is now when it comes to the gameplay this game plays pretty similarly to most 2d sonic games but the big gimmick really is that there is multiplayer you know it's not like exactly like new super mario brothers there is no collision with the other characters but yeah it's a multiplayer 2d sonic game and i think this is a great idea i don't know why it took so long for us to actually get this you know there's always two player modes in the other games but a fully cooperative 2d sonic game yeah it seems like a good idea and i think the way the game handles the co-op is fine you know i've heard several people complain about the multiplayer where if one person Person runs off screen the game will likely track that person who runs off screen and the other people will have to spawn in but in all fairness this is how it's always been in Sonic since like Sonic 2 and I think it's fine it really is fine it's not like New Super Mario Brothers or Mario Wonder where it's like gonna zoom out a little or it's just gonna push the other character no just let them spawn in I I think it's fine and the way it does multiplayer is, is it works there are five playable characters in this game there is Sonic who has the drop dash from Mania which is awesome there's Tails who can fly there's Knuckles who can glide and climb walls, and Amy who has the hammer which is basically a double jump. I like how all four of the characters are different, they all have different attributes, and it makes multiplayer fun. In multiplayer you cannot have two of the same character either, so not everyone's going to get to be Sonic. There is also a secret fifth character that plays kind of like a mix of all the characters combined, which is cool. So once you have chosen your characters, you'll go through 11 different zones where you're really just going left to right. Along the way, you'll go through loops, you'll do plenty of platforming, enemies will get in the way, and each zone really does have a little gimmick to it. Some of these are clearly better than others, but I like that there is variety here. When it comes to the levels, look, I'm not going to say these are some of the best 2D levels in a Sonic game, but they're certainly not the worst. They are a little simplified, it feels feels like from other Sonic games, probably to accommodate the multiplayer, there's still alternate routes and there still is replayability with them, but they don't feel as robust or expansive as say Sonic 3 and Knuckles or even Sonic Mania. But I think for the most part, the levels are pretty decent here. They're not going to make you go wowie zowie, but some of the gimmicks I think are fun. You know, the water slides is always going to be fun. And the pixel gimmick, yeah, I enjoyed this. Some levels are kind of stinkers. A few of them aren't too fun. The anti-gravity stuff, I was just not big on. You move just way too slow. But for the most part, yeah, 
they're solid enough, the levels, yeah, it's alright. When it comes to the physics and controls, look, I think it's just alright in this game. It obviously is slowed down to accommodate the multiplayer. The speed you're getting in this game is not going to be the speed you get in plenty of other 2D Sonic games. I'm not coming in here expecting the same speed since there are multiple characters. I expected it to be a bit slower, and it is, but I still think you have a half-decent sense of speed. I won't lie, the characters do feel a little sluggish and stiff at times, even compared to Mania, but it's still okay. I think the flow and the speed and general pacing of the game, yeah, I think it is all right. Like plenty of other 2D Sonic games, there are hidden rings around each area that are not hard to find at all, just these giant floating rings that take you to the special stages like Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Now when it comes to the special stages, it's actually something totally new here. They took a note from Spider-Man and Attack on Titan and you're swinging towards these Chaos Emeralds. I still don't really know how I feel about these special stages. They're they're okay, they're unique, they're different, it's not the half pipe, but I wouldn't say these are great, you know, the lock-on system is a little finicky, and a few of the stages were really annoying, but they weren't bad, they were just okay. Once you do get a Chaos Emerald, though, it actually does give you an ability. You can use these abilities however you want, you get one charge per checkpoint, and some of them are very useless. Other ones are actually pretty decent, like summoning a vine that helps you platform up, these were half decent. The abilities aren't going to rock your cock off, but I think it's a decent addition to the 2D Sonic formula. I liked it, I thought it was alright, but I also see that you have to stop completely to use the ability which might be weird in a 2D Sonic game. This is also how you activate Super Sonic or Super Character, whichever you're playing as, once you get all seven. Cool, you can be Super Sonic anywhere. The game even has a nice presentation look. It doesn't look amazing, it's not a huge AAA game. You can tell it's a little bit more budget here, but I like how the characters look, I like the art style, I like the aesthetic, I think some of the environments look nice if not a little flat. But the key thing to note here is, despite how many players we were playing with, I never had any frame rate issues at all. The frame rate was super smooth and just kind of perfect here, which is a big plus. So this game seems alright, seems like a fun multiplayer game, but you know how these go. I, I got some issues with this game. First off, it's a bit buggy. I played it release. There were some bugs we had, especially during the bosses, and really, my biggest issue with this game are the bosses. The bosses in this game are freaking terrible. Almost all of them are horrible. They all take way too long, are incredibly tedious, buggy, and just boring. The final boss in particular is one of the worst final bosses of any Sonic game. This thing was so buggy, we died so many times because it just glitched out and this I hated the final boss. I really hated the final boss. The bosses are the low point of this game. Another thing is the pacing. It's a little weird if you're playing in multiplayer and you're going through this game. There are actually some single player stages and the game encourages you, you know, to play through the single player stage and it's like, okay, everyone's just sitting and waiting for you to finish the single player stage and I thought that was a bit weird and those single player stages aren't amazing and what that kind of tells to me is you know this game I only played it in multiplayer I played exclusively in multiplayer I don't know how well it holds up in single player I don't know if it's boring or the levels aren't very good in single player I can really only speak for the multiplayer which is what they were pushing here they want you to play through the game in multiplayer and I think in multiplayer yeah I think it's pretty solid it's fun it's decent but in single player I really don't know and these single player levels do not inspire confidence in me so if you're gonna play this game play it in multiplayer play it with a family member a friend a dog an enemy whoever you can get to play this fucking game with you have someone play it with you another thing is the battle mode is dog shit this is terrible like what even is this the races were always better than this shit this game has a bunch of customization for the battle mode too where you get like medals and you can buy parts and stuff you need hella medals for this stuff and medals are all over this game they have special stages up the wazoo bonus stages up the ass like it doesn't feel like a bonus there's so many bonus stages and yeah, I didn't really care for the medals or the customization or the battle mode. Anything to do with that, I didn't really care for. The music also is kind of hit and miss. Some of it, the stuff by T. Lopez, pretty good. But the other stuff, like the boss theme, is not very good. Look, Sonic Superstars is good, but it's not great. It does have some issues. I think if you enjoy 2D Sonic and have someone that wants to play it with you, it's worth playing. If you're playing by yourself and you love 2D Sonic, it might not be so great. Regardless of your interest level, wait for a sale. Just wait for a sale. The game isn't super long and it'll be cheap sooner than later. But I am glad that I had some fun with this game. It's not totally garbage and it's not super mid. It is all right. So here it is, the original Sonic the Hedgehog, releasing for the Genesis in 1991. We're finally talking about it, and you know, all these years later, over 30 years later, is the original Sonic the Hedgehog even any good these days? 
Yeah, I still think it's pretty good. Of course, playing it in current year, you can see that it has aged in a few aspects, you know. Some areas are clearly better than others, but for the most part, I still think this is a very solid 2D platformer with a decent sense of speed in certain levels. The original game, you know, it had about as basic of a story as it gets. It's about Sonic trying to stop Dr. Robotnik and save a bunch of animals. It really was that simple. Now, when it comes to the gameplay, it is, in one word, is iconic. It set the standard for really every 2D Sonic going forward. You can't do a bunch of different crazy maneuvers here, not as much as the later games. You know, you can go pretty fast, you can jump, and you can turn into a ball when you start going pretty fast and roll down some hills. That's really it. Obviously, you're not going to have a bunch of different moves and the levels aren't going to have a ton of gimmicks to them or be anywhere near as complex as later Sonic games, but simplicity sometimes is king. And I think despite this game's simplicity, especially when comparing all the 2D Sonic games, it still holds up and it's still fun even nowadays. When it comes to how Sonic controls and feels and the momentum and physics and all of that, I think they actually did a pretty great job for the first game. I mean, I think it's very solid. Sonic's great to control. He feels nice, and he's got a good sense of speed here. When you roll down a hill, it feels nice. And when it comes to the levels, some of them are really accommodating to that speed, you know? Hill Green Zone, Zone Green Hill, whatever the thing's called. I think it's pretty famous in uh, other Sonic games, you know, just a little stage. Nobody really cared about it, but this one is decent. There are some other decent ones in here. Spring Yard, Starlight. These are actually still pretty good zones. They're fun to go through there's alternate paths i like these zones still but then you know i'm gonna just go to it labyrinth zone what were they thinking here it was bad when it came out it's really bad now this is like the worst zone in the game one of the worst zones in any 2d sonic game labyrinth zone sucks and all my homies hate labyrinth zone if you wanted the homies you let me know down below but <laughs> we already know y'all hate labyrinth zone look most of the levels i still think are pretty good here not all of them are winners but a majority of them are good and I'd say the level design for the most part is pretty good and it is enjoyable. You know, the only other thing to really bring up with this game are the special stages, which are just kind of nauseating. I've never been huge on these, but it's not the worst special stages Sonic has ever had, not even close. And other than that, the last thing to bring up would be the presentation. The game looked great for the time. It looks nice now. I really do love the sprites of Sonic 1 and the music is just legendary. It's all really great stuff. It's all just really good. I love the music here. If you haven't played Sonic 1 at this point, I really don't care who you are, just try Sonic 1. You know, there's a reason the whole series took off the way that it did. It was this game. It started everything. It's just one of those games that I think every human being should try at some point. Game's still pretty good even nowadays. Sonic 1, it's a classic. And here we have the first Sonic Advance, developed by Dimps and released for the GBA in 2002. The first Sonic Advance, you know, it's aged pretty well. Now when it comes to the story, it's very simplistic. Eggman's trying to take over the world and it's up to Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy to stop him. And speaking of those four characters, you get to choose who you want to be before you start the game. You'll play as that character the entire game, whether you're Sonic going super fast with the Insta Shield, whether you're Tails and you're flying around, or you're Knuckles and you're gliding and climbing walls, or you're even Amy with her hammer. All four characters do play decently different from each other and they'll be going about these levels in different ways. I like how there's four different characters and I think they all control well. In fact, when it comes to the controls and momentum and physics i think it's very solid in this game it might be the very best of the advanced games it actually does feel very nice and the levels for the most part are accommodating they are a little heavier on the platforming side rather than the speed side but i think the levels are still pretty solid here i think the design is good there's some nice themes and while there isn't a ton of levels here and you could probably finish the game in an hour and a half i think this is more of a quality versus quantity situation and you can play through the game as multiple characters when it comes to getting the special stages you just got to find like a spring that is hidden about and you'll be in the special stages the special stages aren't terrible here finding the spring is a little annoying since you will have to do some exploration but it's the best special stages of the advanced trilogy it's the easiest to get to as well you don't got to do a ton of exploration where you're just doing levels over and over so i can appreciate that but I still don't love the special stages here. Sonic Advance, yeah, it's a pretty solid game. The difficulty, I think, ramps up nicely. A majority of the levels are pretty good. While I don't like the egg rocket, it takes just way too long to get through. A majority of them are solid and are fun to go through. The game, again, has a decent sense of speed. The controls are nice, and it even has some memorable moments. Presentation-wise, I think the game looked great for the time. I love its aesthetic. I love how the sprites look and how expressive they are. Music-wise, unfortunately, it is pretty forgettable. I just don't really recall any of the music from the original Sonic Advance like it's probably okay but I couldn't remember it 
All in all, Sonic Advance though, it's a pretty solid 2D platformer and if you like Sonic and haven't tried Advance 1, I think it's actually worth trying. It is the most straightforward when compared to Advance 2 and 3, but again, sometimes simplicity is king and I had fun with this one. And here we have Sonic Colors, but for the DS, you know, most people know the Wii version that was eventually re-released, but a lot of people seem to forget that there was a DS game that was developed by Dimps and is actually a pretty solid 2D platformer. It plays much more like the Rush games with all the boosting, but yeah, it's actually a good game. The story is exactly the same with the Eggman land in space and Sonic and Tails thinking he's up to no good and the Wisps showing up. When it comes to the gameplay, it is basically Sonic Rush's gameplay. This basically is Sonic Rush 3, only with some Sonic Color stuff like the Wisps showing up. You're still boosting, you're still doing the tricks, thankfully Sonic isn't popping off anymore. And the level C, you're still going through blisteringly fast with a ton of boosting. You now have the Wisp abilities, not all of them show up from the Wii version. There are even a couple exclusive ones here and these are fine enough they're about as gimmicky as they were in the Wii version and nothing overstays their welcome you don't even have to use them for a couple parts of the game my favorite was definitely drill or the giant shadow monster where you just kind of absorb everything and blow up and when it comes to this game's level design it does not even come close to trying to replicate the Wii version it really again does its own thing it has its own levels sure the themes you know are the same but it really does try to have its own level design the controls are pretty nice the momentum seems fine enough and I think that this is more than a solid enough effort. Yeah, it's not the longest, and it doesn't have Blaze the Cat as a playable character, which is a shame, because Sonic's friends actually show up in this game, which is different from the Wii version. But all in all, I would still say that this is actually a pretty decent Sonic game. I would say it's underrated at this point, since I don't think most people even give this game the time of day, because they probably just assume it's a crummy handheld version of a Wii game, and you know... Part of me thought that too, but then I tried it and was like, oh, this is actually different, this is actually decent. I would say this game is like just as good as Sonic Rush. The music, for the most part, it still slaps, the presentation is fine, the controls are fine. I think this is a fun little time. I think if you like 2D Sonic, this is definitely worth checking out. Most people, I think, are really sleeping on this one, and that's a shame because what we have is pretty good. Maybe you should totally check it out. And here we have Sonic Advance 2 releasing for the Game Boy Advance in 2002. Developed by Dimps again, it really is the follow-up to Sonic Advance and is, in my opinion, the best of the Advance trilogy and one of the better 2D Sonic games. When it comes to the game's story, it's about Sonic trying to go save his friends and retrieve the seven Chaos Emeralds from Eggman, you know really riveting stuff here. This was the game to introduce Cream the Rabbit though, it was not Sonic Heroes, which I didn't actually know until I played this game. And speaking of characters, while you only start with Sonic, you do get Tails, Knuckles, Cream, and Amy. The returning characters play pretty much the same as they did in Advance, but Cream is a little different. She has this chow named Cheese to help her that just annihilates bosses. Cream is like the easy mode of this game. But I like how all the characters are still different from each other and it does add some replayability. Now when it comes to the core gameplay of Sonic Advance 2, I think it's pretty good. I think it's one of the best when it comes to 2D Sonic. This game, I'll just say right off the bat, has a great sense of speed. It is one of the best senses of speed I've seen from any Sonic game. Like, right off the bat, you are blasting. We got some blast processing shit going on here because you go fast. You go really fast, especially in the first couple levels. It's really exhilarating and I do enjoy it. When it comes to the controls, it actually controls very nice. I think it's tighter, it's a little better than the first games. It's not super finicky and stiff, but it's also not slippery as all hell like the third game. I think they do strike a nice balance, and I think the control is actually good here. And each of the characters do have their own feel, control, and momentum as well, which, again, I think it's all good. I think it adds, you know, to each character and their play style. I think the momentum's good. I think the pacing is good, the flow, sense of speed. It's all really solid, and a lot of these levels are really accommodating for that. I say a lot of them. Let's just talk about the level design now. I'd say the first half of this game, it's pretty solid, you know? It really does accompany that sense of speed. It's exhilarating. It's fun. The platforming's really solid. It's some good shit. However, this game has a huge difficulty spike. Like, once you get to, like, the fourth zone, this game just shoots up in difficulty to become, in my opinion, like, the hardest 2D Sonic game of them all. Like, I have never, and I really do mean never, died so many times in a Sonic game. Like, this game is not fucking around. A lot of precise platforming, 
difficulty spikes and just challenging areas the, some of the bosses are even challenging like this game is not fucking around this game is like an hour or two long but if you die as much as i did this game's like three four hours long i was playing it with one of my friends and we were shocked with just how challenging this game is it was actually really surprising and then towards the end of the game you do a boss rush where you fight every single boss in one life and i was like dude this is a fucking gauntlet i was I was not expecting this at all. This game is not beginner friendly. If you're going to play this game, make sure you play a couple other Sonic games before. But this game, it has a ton of great shit to it besides that difficulty spike. You know, the music is pretty solid. Again, great sense of speed. Good levels for the most part. The game looks great and it's got replayability. Yeah, I think this is really one of the best Sonic games on not only Game Boy Advance, but on a 2D plane. It's a shame that it kicked my ass so much, but it is very rewarding. When we finally did beat it, it was incredibly rewarding, and we never had that much trouble with the other characters or ever again, honestly. It was just that first time where there was a lot of beginner's traps, there was a lot of trial and error, but we finally got through it, and, you know, we prevailed. Call it a major skill issue, I guess, but try playing it nowadays and tell me that. Something, though, that is not rewarding and is challenging for the wrong reasons is getting to these special stages. You have to collect these hidden coins in the levels, and I just hate this shit, man. You gotta go through these levels really slowly if you want to try to find all these coins, and if you miss one, well, fuck, you gotta start over, and it's like, I don't want to do that. I just want to go through the level, and some of these levels are really difficult, and I don't want to play through them over and over and over looking for this, so... Screw the special stages. Another thing that I think is really cool that's worth mentioning real quick is the movement. Sonic and friends have a bunch of new moves added to their arsenal, like a boost forward or upwards into the air, and the game does not tell you about these at all. I had to look them up to figure out how to do them. The first advance has them as well, but they're not required to beat the game here. You absolutely need to understand the extra movement that you get, and I think it's very cool. Alright, I feel like I've been a little all over the place here, so let's reel it back in and come to the conclusion. That conclusion is Sonic Advance 2, very good 2D platformer, very challenging, but also incredibly rewarding, and I think people who like Sonic very much should play this game. It is one of the best senses of speed I've gotten from any Sonic game, and I'm glad I played it, because I really did enjoy it in the end. You know, when I wasn't pulling out what's left of my hair due to one of this game's just gauntlet levels or the boss fights, but other than that, yeah, pretty good game. And so here we have Sonic Rush releasing in 2005 for the DS. This would actually be the start of the whole boost formula that Sonic would really become known for in the late 2000s, early 2010s. It all got started here on the DS. Now, I have a ton of nostalgia for this game. I got it like right when it came out. I played a ton of it in elementary school. I've played through it numerous times. And so, you know, maybe it's that nostalgia that's really propping it up on the list, but I still think Sonic Rush is actually a pretty good game. The plot of this game is a little different from most Sonic games. It features Blaze the Cat. This was her first game. This was her introduction as a princess from another dimension, and she even has her own Dr. Eggman, Eggman Nega, and so she has to team up with Sonic for them to defeat the Eggman. And you know, the story's pretty alright here. It actually has some decent development. They really flesh Blaze out, and I generally liked her. Sonic and Friends is fine also. The story, yeah, I quite liked it. Now this gameplay, it was again the first to introduce the boost formula to Sonic the Hedgehog. It's in a 2D format obviously, but really what it sees you doing is going from point A to B incredibly fast, doing tricks and boosting. You'll be going at incredibly high speeds, you'll be doing all these cool looking tricks where Sonic and Blaze pop off in order to build more boost so then you can go through these stages faster and faster. There is even a homing attack here and you'll sometimes fight some enemies. The platforming is pretty basic here, the momentum feels a little weird since it's all about the boosting. But for the most part I found this gameplay incredibly exhilarating for a 2D platformer on such a small handheld and I remember as a kid just being blown away with how fast I could go in this game and you know looking back, yeah you really do go really fast in this game and it's actually pretty nice. Now does the level design stack up against say some of the original Sonic games? No I don't think it's that good but for the most part it's pretty good you know it's not the most complex since it's all about just going as fast as you can but I still did enjoy it. I like how you don't just play as Sonic, who plays how he usually does, but you also get to play as Blaze, who's a little slower, but she can also do this hover, and playing as her is great, she's basically just Sonic, but a little different, you play through all the levels twice over, once as her, once as Sonic, and I didn't really mind this, actually, it's not a Sonic Hero situation, the game isn't that long, they play a bit different, and the game was actually just an incredibly high amount of fun. 
I think it's some of the best handheld action Sonic has ever had. It's not all perfect, the boss fights were pretty awful through and through. The game isn't exactly very long either, taking maybe a couple hours to beat it most. That's why I replayed through this game so much as a kid. The music though, oh, the music's really good in this game, and the game looked pretty good. It was pretty early in the DS's lifespan, and I always thought it looked nice. I have a lot of nostalgia for this game playing in elementary school, but even aside from that, all these years later, I still think it's a pretty good game and I do absolutely recommend it. And here we have Sonic CD, releasing originally in 93 for the Sega CD. You know, growing up, I always heard about this mysterious 2D Sonic game that like barely anybody played, and that game was always Sonic CD, so it's really great to see how many times the game has been re-released nowadays, but is it still really all that good? Yeah, I think Sonic CD is actually pretty solid. Does it have some flaws and it has it aged in certain areas? Yes, but all in all, Sonic CD is pretty cool. So Sonic CD is a little bit of a different story from the first game. It sees Sonic trying to protect this extraterrestrial body known as Little Planet from Dr. Robotnik. He's trying to use it for nefarious reasons and he even has a robot sidekick Metal Sonic to try to stop regular Sonic and you know the story it's actually kind of interesting it did introduce Amy to the series as well and when it comes to the gameplay the game does play more like Sonic 1 remember this did come out before Sonic 2 so Tails wasn't originally here nowadays I know Tails Knuckles and Amy are in Sonic CD but originally there was none of that it was just Sonic and Sonic could do a few different things here they introduced the spin dash where you hold down and press the button rapidly but they also introduced the super peel out where you hold up and press the button rapidly to go really fast obviously the spin dash is the one that stayed consistent so that's the one I recommend using but it's a 2d platform where you go left to right for the most part stomping on baddies doing some platforming running through some loops and generally going pretty fast but there are a few things that Sonic CD does that's a little different from other Sonic games mainly the past present mechanic so Sonic CD actually has time traveling yes you can actually time travel if you find a gate going to the past or future and then go fast enough 66 miles per hour you will travel whichever sign you went past so there's actually three different versions of each level, past, present, future, and they all are different from each other, decently different in some areas. They're not just skins, and really the goal here is you want to go back to the past and find the secret robot generators and robot spawners that Eggman plays to ensure a good future. If you don't ensure a good future, it's all bleak and desolate and shitty but if you change it in the past you can actually change it in real time where you'll go to the future and it'll be all nice and happy and that's really how you get the game's best ending or you just do the special stages and get all the emeralds the special stages in this game I actually really enjoy them they take advantage of the Sega CD they're like these pseudo 3d environments where you have to destroy these UFO looking things and I've always really enjoyed them actually and getting to the special stages isn't stupid hard either I think the gameplay is pretty solid in Sonic CD you know it was on the CD so they did try to add some fancy gimmicks that I guess just weren't possible on the Genesis like when you run straight up a wall but I think most of the levels do take advantage of these gimmicks and are actually well done. Most of the levels. Some of the levels in this game, I won't lie, are not very good. Wacky Workbench, I'm looking at you, motherfucker. Wacky Workbench, this is a wacky piece of shit is what this is, where you just go up and down and all around. But there are plenty of good levels as well. I would say, for the most part, the levels are pretty good in Sonic CD. Have a few of them not aged all that well, that... Yeah, that has happened, but most of them are good. When it comes to the controls and the physics, it's much more in line with Sonic 1, and if you didn't like how Sonic 1 felt, you're probably not going to like how this game feels, but I enjoy the movement, the flow, the pacing, the controls. I, I think it's all very solid. I've always really enjoyed the gameplay of Sonic CD, actually. Something that I also really enjoy is the music. The music in Sonic CD is fantastic. There's actually two versions, the US and the Japanese version. Both of them are excellent. I love both of them. Some of my favorite music from Sonic games it comes from this game. The special stage theme, the US version, man, that shit just hits so good. I fucking love that song. I've had it in so many of my videos for a reason. It just slaps. The music's great. No matter which version you're listening to, the presentation is excellent. It looks great. The sprites are great. The environments are incredibly lively. I really enjoy how Sonic CD looks, plays. It's a really solid game. Is it the best 2D Sonic game? No, it's not. In a few zones can eat my ass in the whole past, present future mechanic isn't great I won't lie to you going back to the past and looking for the robot spawner this isn't great it's part of that exploration nonsense that I don't really care for in a 2d Sonic game and I always honestly just ignore it and get the emeralds it's easier to get the emeralds but if you really want to go back to the past and look for the shit you can but it's not my favorite 
Overall though, Sonic CD, yeah, I think it's aged incredibly well. I'm glad it's so widely available. It's not that hidden, mysterious Sonic game barely anybody played. No, it's very much available nowadays, and I recommend it, especially if you like 2D platformers or Sonic. I think you're not going to be disappointed unless you're on wacky fucking workbench. And here we have the legendary Sonic 2 releasing for the Genesis in 1992. You know, Sonic 2 is one of the most beloved games in the entire series, and it's really easy to see why. It doesn't really matter if it's 92, 2022, 2222, this game slaps. They really looked at the original game of what worked, what didn't work, how can we improve this formula, and how can we make it just legendary, and that's, that's exactly what they did. Not only did they add some blast processing, but they gave Sonic a new buddy, this character named Tails. You know, he's this little yellow fox with two tails, and I don't think he ever really accomplished much in the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise, but you know, he's pretty cool. It's cool that he's there, he follows you around, he can even help you a little bit, and if you're playing with a second player, they can actually play with you. But yeah, they go on to stop Dr. Eggman, it's a pretty basic story. But it really doesn't matter, the story's still kind of gold, and when it comes to gold, we have the gameplay. They really looked at the original game, they said, let's make the levels bigger, let's make Sonic faster, let's add to the sense of speed, tighten up the controls, add the spin dash, for real this time. Put in some banger tunes, some boss fights that don't want to make you rip your hair out, and you know, we have a recipe for, for something pretty good here. Sonic 2, this shit is good. Like I alluded to, Sonic can now do the spin dash, so you just hold down and keep pressing the jump button and he'll take off, just like that. And when you talk about taking off in this game, you gotta talk about the sense of speed. Sonic 2 feels way faster than the first game. It has a great sense of speed, and the levels are built around going fast. You know, Sonic 1, some of the levels weren't Labyrinth Zone, but this game, oh no. Like, all the levels are centered around going fast. So, you know, while we're talking levels, the levels in Sonic 2 are excellent. Some of the best levels in any Sonic game. They were great then, they're great now. They totally understand what Sonic is about with multiple routes, going fast, platforming, there is a little bit of challenge, and of course a bunch of rings to collect, you know? I really do like the levels of Sonic 2, there are some really great levels, like truly some of the best levels Sonic has ever seen, some of the most iconic and legendary themes and levels are right here in this second game, you know, Chemical Plant Zone anybody, you ever, you ever heard of that one, that's a pretty good one. Oil Ocean Zone, maybe you heard of that one, that one's pretty sick, pretty ill if you ask me, but I would argue there's really no bad zones in Sonic 2. Some levels are clearly better than others, any of them with the splicers is going to be my least favorite, but I'd still argue that there's no bad levels here. They all have a baseline level of quality that is just kind of unmatched for most Sonic games, like, they're all good, what an idea. And the controls are just as good as the first game, if not even better. They're tighter, they're smoother, the game feels really nice, Sonic is a blast to control. You know, the physics, momentum, speed, pacing, whatever you want to say along those lines, it's all really good in Sonic 2. Like, it really is great. Like, truly, it is just a joy to control Sonic in this game, and I couldn't have asked for any more. Tails is great to control, too. The game does have multiplayer, which, you know, I never played a ton of, but it's cool that it's here. Something else that Sonic 2 started that plenty of other Sonic games follow is the way special stages work. All you have to do is get 50 rings and pass a checkpoint, which might seem simplistic compared to the advanced games, but trust me, this is way better. And then you go into the half pipe, you know, you just gotta collect rings, and yeah, plenty of other Sonic games have the half pipe, but I mean... It was kind of low-key always done the best here in Sonic 2, the original half-pipe. It was pretty good in Sonic Rush also, but a little too easy. Sonic 2 half-pipe is the best half-pipe. Fight me if you don't think so. I, I'd love to hear why, though. You would not think this is the best half-pipe. But seriously, the special stages are good, the main levels are good, the boss fights are tolerable, they're really quick, they just are over like that. It's really nice, they're not super annoying or tedious or boring. No, it's not like that at all, the boss fights are fine here. There's really just not much to complain about with Sonic 2. Presentation-wise, it looks even better than the first one. It is very vibrant. It just looks great. The sprite works great, and who could hate this? And the music, uh, it's so good. The music is legendarily good. So many great themes here. Like, it, it's so good. The music is so good. Look, Sonic 2, it's pretty clear how I feel about it. It is a great game. It is one of the very best Sonic games ever made. There's a reason so many people love it and say that it might be the best Sonic game ever still, because... It's just that good, like the game is really good, it's one of the best 2D platformers ever made, and while it might not be my favorite 2D Sonic, it is still one of the very best Sonic games, period. Like, you really just can't deny that, and the game's had so, so, so many re-releases, you really have no excuse to not try it at this point. Nowadays, you can even do like Knuckles in Sonic 2, and there's even Amy in Sonic 2 now, so 
plenty of reason to go back to Sonic 2. It doesn't really matter the year. Sonic 2 is still just fantastic. Just go play it. But then we have just the truly phenomenal Sonic Mania. Releasing originally in 2017, Sonic Mania is not only one of the best 2D Sonic games, but one of the best 2D platformers on this planet. Like, Sonic Mania not only completely understands the assignment, but just understands what made Sonic popular to begin with. After so many games where it feels like Sonic strayed further and further away from his roots, Sonic Mania came back and showed that not only is the classic formula still viable in the modern day, but they can come up with new ideas, they can improve on the formula, and it will actually flourish and be fun, and it can have a fantastic presentation on top of that. It doesn't have to look all fancy in 3D, it can look like the older games, and people are still going to love it. Look, when they announced this game, I immediately sat up and was like, oh shit, this is going to be good. Like, I looked at who was developing it, it was a bunch of people who worked on fan games and ROM hacking, I was like, no. These people understand Sonic. This is going to be a good game. I bought the special edition with the giant Sonic statue immediately because I was so excited for it. And the game absolutely did not disappoint. Like, this is just through and through one of the best Sonic games ever made. When it comes to the plot, it's about Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles trying to defeat Eggman. You know, real original stuff here, but... I don't need anything more than that, especially for a 2D Sonic game. And speaking of characters, this game's got some characters. You know, the original release was just Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, but over the years there's been some updates to this game and they've added even more characters. They added Mighty the Armadillo and Ray the Flying Squirrel, which I absolutely did not expect. I thought these guys were left for dead, like they really were just dead. Not in any Sonic games for like 15 plus years, but here they are playable and they have their own moveset as well that's different from Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. I'm just like, well shit, this is pretty awesome. But once you choose your character, you'll go through a bunch of zones. A lot of these zones are remixes of older Sonic zones with some new flair, some new gimmicks, some new ideas. But there are plenty of new stages and new content here as well. It does not feel like you're replaying older Sonic games. It just kind of is like, oh yeah, remember that? Remember that part of Chemical Plant? That's here, but it's really a new level. And the same goes for the bosses. These really are remixes. And you know what? When it comes to the levels, when it comes to the bosses, when it comes to all the things surrounding the gameplay, really, it's just fucking awesome. Like, it is so good in this game. They totally understood everything about Sonic. They understood what makes a great Sonic game. These are some of the very best levels you will find in any 2D platformer, let alone a Sonic game. Like, they are just all excellent. The new levels are really great too. The older levels, you know, the ones that are remixed, they're really solid. There's some fun throwbacks, but there's plenty of new stuff here, but it's just all great with tons of alternate paths, plenty of secrets. Of course, there's the giant rings that take you to the special stages. These are hidden all about but they're not too obscure either like the levels are so good in this game you will want to replay this game just to play through some of the levels and find new paths like it's really solid speaking of those special stages they return here you just got to find the ring and these are more like sonic cd which i was not expecting but these are actually some of the best sonic special stages of them all where you just collect these orbs and try to get to the chaos emerald they're really solid they're not the most challenging but I really like them. I love how they look. And you know, while we're talking about looks, I love how this game looks. This game looks like the Sega Saturn game we never got. Like, if we got a 2D Sonic game with sprites on Saturn, it'd probably look like this. This game, it just looks amazing. The sprite work is the best sprite work maybe of any Sonic game. The environments are all full of color and life. There's so much to them. I love how this game looks. Presentation is just fantastic. And the music... <laughs> It really might be the best music of like any Sonic game. I have listened to the soundtrack so much. It is just so good. Whether it's the old stuff getting remixed or the new tracks entirely. It is stupid good. Like hot damn. The music is really good in this game. Like it slaps. It fucks. It totally gets laid. Like this music is so good. The controls. The physics. The momentum. It's the same story, man. It is so good. This game feels great to play. It's incredibly fun. Sonic and Friends, they just feel so good. The momentum is exactly what you want. None of the start and stop bullshit. There's weight. It's really smooth. It's really easy to pick up and play. There's different moves they all have. The super peel out returns. Like, the moveset is fantastic. They added the drop dash where you can spin dash right when you hit the ground. Like, how was this not in, like, every Sonic game? Like, it just seems like a no-brainer now. It's such a good move. Like, the moveset's great. The movement is great. 
the pacing, the speed, great sense of speed by the way, like it is just fantastic. We are going to be gushing here for a hot second because it really is just so good and this game does have a bunch of depth to it especially compared to most Sonic games with all the power-ups different ways you can go about it like it just feels like it never ends I played through this game numerous times and I'm still finding new shit and then the fan service in this game is unbelievable there is so much fan service it is just amazing like I have not smiled so much with a Sonic game in forever like I love the fan service this game was made by fans for fans if you've been a long time Sonic fan and have not not played this game for some reason I don't know what you're doing I really don't know what you're doing do everything you can to play Sonic Mania it's dirt cheap now just go play it it doesn't really matter who you are I think this game is just totally worth playing and it's really hard to not say this is the best 2d Sonic game and at times you know certain days this is my favorite 2d Sonic game but not today Today my favorite 2D Sonic game is Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Now if we separated Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles, you know, it wouldn't be my favorite. But putting them together like they always should have been, yeah, Sonic 3 and Knuckles really is my favorite. Not only my favorite 2D Sonic, maybe my favorite Sonic game period, but really just one of my favorite games of all time. Like, it is just a fantastic game that everyone who likes 2D platformers, I think they can enjoy this one. They really tried to improve on the formula of Sonic 2, add even more depth, new moves, new character with Knuckles, and just some of the most complex level design that has ever been in a Sonic game, like actually. But let's take a step back here and talk about the story. The game story is about Sonic and Tails investigating something on Angel Island when they get interrupted by new character Knuckles, who takes all the Chaos Emeralds. And he seems to be working with Eggman, so it's up to Sonic and Tails to stop him. Now, I don't want to spoil a 20 plus year old game, but uh, things are not what they seem. Knuckles is actually a friend, a very confused and kind of stupid friend, but a friend nonetheless. The story is definitely the most complex of the Sonic trilogy, the original Sonic trilogy, but it's still very basic and easy to understand. But I mean, how could I not love it? They introduced Knuckles. Knuckles is one of my favorite characters in any game. I love my man Knuckles. He doesn't chuckle. And you can actually play as them here, you don't have to play as Sonic or Tails. Sonic and Tails though are great to play as, they're very similar to how they were in Sonic 2, but Sonic does have the Insta Shield now which you can activate by pressing the jump button twice. Knuckles is a little different, he can glide, he can climb walls, and he can break rocks with his, you know, Knuckles. He's very fun to play as, and the way that you play through these levels as him will not be the same as Sonic and Tails. And you know, let's just get into it, I already talked about it for a moment, but the levels in Sonic 3, whether it's the Sonic 3 levels or the Sonic and Knuckles levels, are probably the most complex levels maybe in any 2D Sonic game. It's either this or Sonic Mania, like, there is so much to these levels, there's a ton to explore, there's so many different ways to go about these levels, whether it's, you know, down in the low area, the top area, somewhere in the middle, there's tons of alternate paths. The levels in Sonic 3 and Knuckles are really just my favorite levels in any Sonic game. Whether it's 2D, 3D, the levels in Sonic 3 and Knuckles are just goaded for me. Like, they are just fantastic. There's not a single bad one. Some are, again, clearly better than others. Some are really better than others, but I just love all of them. Like, even the water level is hella good. You know, the water level in, like, Sonic 2 is, like, tolerable, but in Sonic 3, Hydrocity, Hydro City, however the fuck you say this thing, the level is actually hella good. All of the levels in Sonic 3 and Knuckles are just really, really good. But 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 bangers That's really what they all are. All the levels are bangers, they're all really good, and they all have really kick-ass music. You know, let's just talk about the music. There's been rumors forever that Michael Jackson helped make the music, which is crazy, but the music, it really is just fantastic. Like this and Sonic Mania, my favorite music in any Sonic game, and then probably Sonic Adventure, but like, the music is so good in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, all of it. It's all hella good. Like, not only is this the best music you'll find on the Genesis, but some of the best music you'll find in any game. Like, I really love the music. I've been listening to the music forever. I have put a ton of Sonic 3 and Knuckles music in my videos because I love the the music of this game it is that good and then presentation wise I love how the game looks it's got a steady frame rate the sprite work is amazing the areas are all really vibrant alive it looks great like I just love how this game looks I feel nostalgic for how this game looks because it just it looked great for the time it looks great nowadays I can't imagine someone looking at it and going that looks like shit I don't like that now not this game it looks so good but to move back to the gameplay, I want to talk about the speed, the control, the momentum, the physics, the flow. It's all really good. Like, it's probably the best of any Sonic game. The only game that I think can match this game in terms of what I just spoke of is Sonic Mania. 
And Sonic Mania came out like 15 years later when technology has advanced, you know, tenfold when it comes to video games. So the fact that the physics and the controls and the flow and the momentum of this game is still as good as it is really speaks volumes to how great this game is when it comes to controlling it. Like, it feels great. It's incredibly fun to control. It never feels stiff or clunky or oversensitive or the acceleration is through the roof. Like, they just nailed it here. You don't even think about the controls or the physics because it's just that good. It just works and it's like as close to perfect as it gets. This game is the gold standard when it comes to controlling Sonic in a Sonic game. Like, it just doesn't really get any better than this. It is just super. Superb. The game has obviously a ton of replayability with the ability to play through as different characters. There's getting all the Chaos Emeralds, there's the Hyper Emeralds here as well where the game just goes fucking nuts. Speaking of getting the Chaos Emeralds, this game introduced the big floating ring you gotta find hidden in the areas. I've always liked looking for these. You don't have to explore or stop completely like say other Sonic games where you have to do all this exploration and it's not very fun. No. Here it's not hard to find the rings. They're not off the beaten path really. Like it's pretty easy to find enough to get all the Chaos Emeralds and then when you get to the special stages it's Blue Sphere. Blue Sphere is maybe the best special stages like ever in a Sonic game. I would argue it's this or Mania's like I really love Blue Sphere. I've always really enjoyed it. And I think it's just fun, like, what an idea, the special stages are fun. I think some other Sonic games like Sonic Heroes could really take some notes here, but special stages are great, and then, you know, getting all of the emeralds twice to get all the special abilities, I really love them. Tails' Flicky Army of Death's great, Super Hyper Sonic, these, it's all great stuff. And you know, I could really talk about this game for like ever. It's one of my favorite games of all time. I got the Sonic Mega Collection as a kid and I played the shit out of this game. I played through it so many times and even nowadays I'm like, no, the game holds up. It's still super good. I have no problem recommending this game. It is just phenomenal. We're going to be here all day unless somebody stops me. This video is long enough as it is. So we're just going to end here. If you could only play one game on this list. It's going to be Sonic 3 and Knuckles or Sonic Mania. Those are both just fantastic. And that's it for today's video. Yep, we're wrapping it up. We have talked every 2D Sonic game. If you made it to this part of the video, comment Hamtaro is in that old anime series. That's just the word I'm using now. Then I'll know you're a real one who made it to the end. You'll get a heart from me. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Love talking about Sonic. I think, I think I'm going to rank every Sonic game now. I mean, at this point, I've ranked Hello, So might as well just talk about every Sonic game in the future. But yeah. That's it for today's video. Please like, share, comment, sub. A super thanks would be greatly appreciated. And yeah, that's it. So everyone have a good Christmas or whatever holidays nearest to you. See ya.